Three million years ago, or so they say, our ape-like ancestors grew bigger brains, climbed down from the trees and walked out of Africa. My ancestors went to the cold north and evolved white skin. According to the experts, Asians evolved their eyelids as a protection from cold winds. And people in hot climates evolved a black sunproof skin. Mind you, that doesn't explain why pygmies who live in jungles where there is no sun have the darkest of skins. And Eskimos, who've lived on the cold ice for thousands of years, are brown. I'm John Mackay, and welcome as we climb down the real family tree of man. In today's multiracial societies, the real way skin colour works is showing as people from different racial backgrounds intermarry. Their children's colours indicate that environment has not been the chief influence in determining skin colour. I suspect the reason that Europeans have lived in colder climates and blacks have lived in more tropical climates is a result of cultural preference rather than a matter of survival. Uh, it is quite easy to demonstrate that black people have survived and done well in cold climates. For example, uh, the Eskimo is a relatively dark-skinned individual and has obviously thrived in a very cold climate. Uh, similarly, whites have survived uh, in, in, in hot climates. Uh, it seems to me most likely that when a culture moved to a particular island or a particular region, uh, they developed a cultural preference for people of their own color uh, or of their own philosophy and style and uh, perpetuated uh, that uh, existence. Other indicators on how skin color works are sometimes seen in the daily press. One brown mum and dad had a set of twins, one jet black, the other snow white. And here's an actor of James Bond fame who was naturally black in the movie Thunderball, but lost his acting career after he turned white in just six days. So what do we really know about skin color? For instance, why do Asians appear yellow? Chinese people appear to be yellow because of the thickness of the outermost layer of the skin, the keratin layer. This sometimes contains other pigments called carotenoids, which have a yellowish tint. You can actually see these on everybody. If you look at the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet, the keratin layer is thickest there and you often see a yellowish tinge. She's right. My hands do that. And look at these hands. And look at those feet. We've all got Asian yellow soles and British white arches on our feet, even if the rest of us is black. So what makes us black, yellow, brown or white? An interesting observation about 20 years ago is that all races have about the same number of pigment producing cells per square inch of skin, black or white. They all produce pigment granules. They all produce the same kind of products, melanin. It's the relative abundance of these products and their distribution in the skin that accounts for differences in skin color. This brings up a basic question. How come some of us have evenly colored brown skin when I tan only in spots and sunburn in between? Can't we evolve the right colour for our environment? The theory that different races have evolved their skin colour to suit their climate does seem to work with some races. For example, if you look at the Solomon Islanders and the Zulus, they live near the equator where there's a lot of ultraviolet light, and so they're very dark. And then if you go up towards the Arctic Circle where there's not much sunlight, you've got the Scots and the Scandinavians, and they're very light. But it doesn't work if you look at some other races. For example, the pygmies might live near the equator, but they live in the jungle where it's not much light at all. And they're very black, 